In this video, we're talking all about workflows. In this automation series, we're diving into the different automation engines that Sprout Studio has for you to use to streamline your business, to give a more consistent experience, and to calm the chaos and stay more organized and spend more of your time doing the things that you love to do. Let's talk a little bit about workflows. Workflows, like we mentioned in the last video, are basically allowing you to map out the journey that you wanna give your clients. So you take a workflow and you apply it to either a lead, if it's a lead workflow, or you apply it to a shoot, which is a shoot workflow. A workflow is really quite simply a series of steps or a series of tasks. And it's meant to mirror the customer journey that you're giving your clients from the point of them first getting in touch with you as a lead to the point of them booking you, that's the lead workflow, and then from the point of them booking you to the point of them being a happy client, and now they're gonna be a repeat client perhaps, that's the shoot workflow part. So both of those together, lead workflows takes care of that first half, and then shoot workflows takes care of that next half. And they're just a series of steps where you say, a day after they inquire, do this thing. A day after they book, do this thing. A week before their shoot, do this thing. So it becomes really simple once you understand the steps of a workflow, and then building it out in Sprout is just the next part, and it's very just tactical getting in and pressing the buttons and doing the thing. My recommendation, and when I teach photographers about designing a beautiful customer experience for their clients, I recommend mapping your workflow out on a piece of paper first, or mapping it out on a giant whiteboard first. Do it without technology in front of you, because otherwise you could get too lost, and you're basically deciding your customer journey or you're coming up with what you want to do for a customer journey in place, like while you're building it out in the software and Sprout, and that might not make a lot of sense. It would make more sense for you to do it with complete clarity on a piece of paper on that whiteboard to say, this is the kind of journey that I want to give my clients, and then taking that and then building it out in Sprout. So with that, let's hop into Sprout and look at how you would actually build it out and look at some of the mechanics of how workflows work in Sprout Studio. So I have Sprout opened up into the settings, automation, and then lead workflows section here. Now again, I've mentioned a few times, the only difference between lead workflows and shoot workflows is that leads are always applied and can only be applied to leads, whereas shoot workflows are only applied and can only applied to shoots. So otherwise they're very, very similar. There's a few small nuances in terms of what steps are available. For example, in a lead workflow, you can uh, have something based on when the client books, whereas the shoot workflow doesn't have that because at that point they're already booked. So uh, they're very similar. There's a few small nuances in terms of the steps, but for the most part, they're very, very similar. So you can create as many workflows as you'd like here. And I've seen photographers, I've seen sprouters who make a new workflow for each kind of photography they offer. I've seen photographers who break out big, long workflows into several smaller workflows and then have one workflow apply the next. So there's lots of different ways to do it depending on how you want to run your business and how nuanced you want to get here. But just know that you can make as many workflows as you'd like uh, here in Sprout Studio and you can apply multiple workflows to any one lead or any one shoot. So let's go ahead and click add lead to open the add lead workflow. Now the first thing we're gonna do is we're just going to give it a name. I'm gonna call this my wedding lead workflow. And this is where we have this add workflow step. And again, a workflow is just a series of steps. I'm gonna go ahead and press add just so we can kind of look at what the step is comprised of. So you basically have this formula that says when this, then that. So what you're basically doing is you're saying when something happens and that something could be, hey, when the workflow is applied or when they first inquire or when the booking proposal is sent or when the booking proposal is signed or if you cancel it or when the lead becomes a shoot or when the status is changed. So whenever this thing happens and let's say you want to say inquiry date, now the when is just the delta. It's, hey, how far after or before, depending on what you have as your this, uh, do you want this to happen? So do you want it to be immediately upon the inquiry date? Or do you want it to be one day after the inquiry date? Or do you want it to be one week after the inquiry date? So you can kind of build this out to, uh, just in layman's terms, read these workflow steps to better understand them. So let's say that we actually go back here and say immediately upon the inquiry date, then this is what I want to do. So you basically have a trigger, which is the this, that's what the thing is that's happening. 
And then you have the action, which is the that. Like what is the thing that you want to do when that happens? And you can have that be, hey, I want to send an email or I want to create a task for myself or I want to send my client the questionnaire or I want to change the status or I want to go ahead and apply another workflow. So that's where if you wanted to build this out as multiple workflows, you could. So this allows you a lot of flexibility to build these really beautiful, these really complex workflows in a really simple and understandable way. So let's say, for example, immediately upon inquiry date, I want to create a task and now I can just name the task and I can say, send a text message video welcome. And I go ahead and press save. So basically what now is going to happen is immediately upon the inquiry date, there's going to be a task created for me to send a text message welcome video. And that's just a task that I can check off and that's it. It's just a way that I can sit here with full clarity. I can map out what's the kind of experience that I want to give my clients. I can think of it once and now I can apply this to every single lead that comes in or I can even have it automatically applied to every lead that comes in. And I can always give this same consistent experience. So that's that step here. Let's kind of run through a few other steps. Let's say something like relative and I'm going to say one day after the inquiry date, then let's go ahead and send an email. Now, who do you want to send the email to? I want it to go to the primary client and which email template do I want to use? Let's use our wedding inquiry template. So there we go. One day after inquiry date, then email the wedding inquiry email. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to say, hey, as soon as that happens, as soon as that email goes out, I want to change the status. So again, this is where mapping these things out on a piece of paper or on a whiteboard makes a lot of sense. I can say something like immediately upon the previous step being complete. So as soon as this thing happens, then let's go ahead and change the status. And I want to change it to in communication. So basically immediately upon the inquiry date, add this reminder one day after the inquiry date, send this email, and as soon as that happens, change the status to in communication. Now, maybe what I'll do here is I will say relative one week after the inquiry date, let's go ahead and add a task, call the client to follow up. So it'll just give me a reminder to go ahead and call the client. So that's kind of like a nice, really simple workflow. Again, you can obviously get as complex as you'd like, and we actually have templates built into Sprout Template Library that you can copy into your account to kind of get started with. But that gives you a good idea of what you can do here in a workflow. Maybe I'll just add one more and I'll say, immediately upon the uh, booking proposal being sent, so as soon as I send them the booking proposal, I wanna go ahead and I want to change the status to booking, because at that point I know they're booking and that way I can keep them nice and organized. And that's basically it. There's like a really simple wedding workflow. I'm going to go ahead and press save on that. And there's my wedding workflow. I can now obviously um, open this up. I can edit it. I can change it. I can click the X here to remove that step. I can click the plus to uh, move it up or down or to add a step below uh, or above it. I can also just click this and move it around if I want to. Um, that way you can kind of keep it organized in whatever way you want to keep it organized. So let's go ahead and press save there. I'm going to just quickly hop into the shoot workflow section here and let's just click add shoot workflow just so we can see what the differences are between these. So if I go wedding shoot workflow and let's go ahead and click add new step. Again, this is like it looks very similar, it's very uh, similar to leads. The only difference is that in here now we have a couple of other options. For example, we have the booking date as of this step. And obviously, we didn't have that for the lead because if it's a lead, it hasn't booked yet or we have the shoot date here as of this step. Again, because we didn't have that for a lead because if there's still a lead, we would never hit the shoot date because there's still a lead. Uh, so we haven't been committed to photograph that. Uh, you can create custom dates in here that you can create these placeholder template dates in there. So a lot of flexibility, but let's say for example, you wanted to say something like um, relative. So let's go one day after the booking date, then let's go ahead and create a task and say send thank you card in the mail. And then we can say, um, let's go relative. We're gonna go one week, no, we're gonna go two weeks before, and we want that to be shoot date. So we're gonna say two weeks before the shoot date, let's go ahead and send a questionnaire, and let's just 
grab this one because we already have it as a template. So you have to have these templates created ahead of time. That's also again why it makes sense for you to map these things out on a piece of paper or on a whiteboard because if you're saying, hey, two weeks before the shoot date, I wanna send this questionnaire, you should make the questionnaire first and then make the workflow to send the questionnaire. So you say, okay, great, what questionnaire do you wanna send? Who do you wanna send it to? We wanna send it to the primary client. Uh, and then which email template do you wanna to use to send that? So I can go ahead and do that. Now the nice thing is that when you apply these, and we're gonna look at this in the next video, uh, you can see these things coming up on your timeline, you can see these things coming up on your, uh, on your dashboard. So you can always click to edit the email and customize the email, you're not stuck to this. You can see exactly what's happening, you can always edit it, you can always delay it, you can always delete it. So there's a lot of flexibility, it's not like this stuff just runs in the background and you have no idea what's happening in your business, you're gonna to get to see exactly what's happening here. That's why your dashboard is so useful in Sprout Studio. But you can always edit these things, uh, but this kind of, again, just gets you started. This gets you 90% of the way there. Um, let's just kind of leave that one alone for now, I guess. We'll save that, and what I wanna show you here is if I go into lead workflows, now that I have a shoot workflow added, I can open up this one, and I'm going to say, immediately upon the lead becoming a shoot, so once it's sort of confirmed and it turns into a shoot, then I wanna go ahead and apply a shoot workflow, and I want to apply this workflow. So now again, I've, I've now connected these workflows. So as soon as this lead that has this workflow books, we're gonna go ahead and apply this shoot workflow. So now you've got this really great um, automation engine that has now connected those two pieces together when that client books. And so quite simply, that's how you build workflows in Sprout. Again, you can see that on the tooling side from a mechanical standpoint, it's not all that complicated. You have to just take some time to read the steps to understand what's happening and we help you along the way with the interface. It's gonna move and shape and adjust based on what's available for you in that thing. Uh, but the most important work and, and the real heavy lifting from your standpoint is to sit down with that piece of paper, sit down with that whiteboard and map these customer journeys out, map these workflows out, map out what do you want to do? What are the things that you want to do on a consistent basis for every one of your clients? Map that out and don't even think about Sprout. But once you've mapped that out and you've got it on a whiteboard, or you've got it on a piece of paper, then you can take it and say, great, let's now go ahead and now build these things, the emails, the questionnaires, so on and so forth, and then let's build that into a workflow. So that is the basics of how to build a workflow in Sprout Studio.